Welcome everyone. Thank you for watching this video on how to start your own novel. My name is Kristen Levis. I'm a freelance writer and the author of the young adult novels The Girl Between Two Worlds and The Girl Between Light and Dark, both published by Anvil Publishing. Today I am presenting on the topic how to write a book. Now this is the first part of the series that I'm gonna do and to make sure that you know it doesn't matter what age you are, if you've never written a full-length novel before, then this video might help you. These are the things I've learned over the years from all the conferences I've attended, as well as my own personal experience, and talks with other authors. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the comment section below or contact me directly through the contact page in my website. I'll try to answer them either through my blog or on the next video. Now, without further ado, let's start the presentation. First of all, this presentation for those who always wanted to write a novel but did not know how to start, or maybe was too afraid to start. Now, this goes for all ages, grade school kids, high school kids, adults, senior citizens. It doesn't matter what age you are. What I can really tell you now is that you can do this. You can definitely do this. Yes, you. You can. Let's start with the how. Step one, read, read, and read some more. The first thing you do in order to write a book is to read. Yes, read. Read a lot of books. Read books you love to read. Read books that you wish you wrote. Read books that other people recommend you should read. Read them again. The first time you read it, enjoy the book like a reader. Just, you know, laze around, sit down, enjoy it. The second time you read the book, look at the characters and the setting. Study them closely. The third time you read a book, look at the style. What's the style of the author? It's different each author, and you will see this the third time you read it. Study it. A lot of other writers give this advice as well, uh, reading, because, well, for me, however, I personally experienced a change in my writing when I started to read more. There was a time when I read nothing but parenting books after my daughter was born, but when I decided to start the Goodreads Reading Challenge, I ended up reading around probably around 60 books a year, and it helped me learn about the many different points of view from the characters. For the characters. It gave me writing ideas on how authors develop their characters, about their writing style. I even noticed the author's crutch words and pet phrases. This allowed me to look at my own work and see what my own crutches and pet phrases are. Here are some examples of the most commonly used pet phrases and crutch words. Do you know yours? I know mine from the list. I can see it, but I'm not going to tell you. Reading books by other authors is not so you can copy the author's writing style or storyline. This is so that you get a grasp of how others do it, and then you put your own spin to it. If you're writing a picture book, look at the illustrations too. See which styles you like. Finally, look at the acknowledgement part of the book. This is where you'll see who helped the author create this book. If anything, it'll give you an idea just how many people are involved with creating a book. Step two, time to create. Now, next come the creation part. Enjoy this process. Take your time with this one. Don't rush it. I love this part of the process. Before I write the actual book, I go through the characters who will be in it. All the characters. The protagonist, the antagonist, the sidekicks, the BFFs, the parents, the school principal, the gardener. I create even the most minor ones because it helps a lot during the process if these people are already whole. I give them a face, hair, neck, height, whether they wear a hat or glasses, their mannerisms, their educational level, their tics. It sounds like a long process, but it should be. The more you know your characters, the smoother the writing process. It'll give you an idea how they interact with each other. Questions like this. Does he have a short fuse? Does she like to flip her hair? Does he hate ice cream? Initially, I suggest you focus on the main characters more until you get a hang of things. Then just keep expanding. As for your world, well, that's a wonderful process too. You get to create your own universe. How amazing is that? Now, take a lot of notes. Look at the web 
and see illustrations and pictures of places around the world. Think of the places you've visited, the places you want to visit, or the place where you grew up. Look at old photos. I love Pinterest. There are so many inspirations for worlds there. You can create your own board and save illustrations and pictures that you like. I create boards and name it like worlds or creatures. And I, I refer to it every now and then, and it helps with visualization. Step three. Now it's the writing part. Time to write. Just write. Right? Sounds easy. No, not really. There are days when it can flow easily, and there are days when it's like pulling teeth. But, as Stephen King once said, fear is the root of most bad writing. If you're already doubting yourself, even before you start writing, then it's going to show in your work. Embrace the task in front of you. Stop comparing yourself with others. Just because a friend or someone you know finished a novel or published a book doesn't mean you can't too. Their success doesn't diminish your own journey. Do your own thing. Run your own race. Here are a couple of things to remember. Write even when you don't feel like it. Don't wait for the muse. If you keep waiting for her or him, you'll never get anywhere. You need to be able to sit down and write even during the days when you don't want to. Writing a book isn't always going to be fun and games. That's what separates the amateurs from the professionals. Schedule a writing time each day. It doesn't have to be all week. It can be five or six times a week, but make a schedule for it. Even something as short as 30 minutes a day will already be thousands of words in a month or so. I wrote for 30 minutes a day for a whole year and managed to finish a novel. It was the only time I could spare, especially juggling work, motherhood, and all that. But it worked for me. Stop with excuses. You don't have a laptop. Use a pen and paper. James Patterson still writes on paper. I know, right? But he pushes out a million books still. When you're on the train, standing up with everyone else, use that time to type stuff on your phone. When you're taking a break, sit down somewhere and grab a pen and notebook. You don't have to be on your desk all the time. You can write anywhere. That's it for the first video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, add them to the comments below or send me an email. I'll try my best to cover it on the next video. Again, thank you everyone. Please share the video to other writers who might find this useful. Or you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook or subscribe to my newsletter on my site. See you next time.